Hello Unlimited friends, it's Zara. I am jumping into the group because there is a really important question that was sent to me via email by one of our Unicorn members. So her question is, why do atrocious acts happen to us as children? I have suffered sexual abuse as a child at the hands of a close family member. What answer does Law of Attraction have for this? In reading Abraham's teaching, I have come to the understanding that we attract everything into our reality. I hope that I am misunderstanding this, as it would mean that I attracted sexual abuse at a young age of 12. And my sister, who was even younger, six at age 6 or 8, attracted the same. As children, did we attract this suffering to us by being in a negative vibration? Other negative events occurred throughout my childhood and my sisters, such as a house fire, tragic death of our father, physical abuse at the hands of our mother, and more. I can understand how we were in a negative vibration and allowing negative events to manifest, but the one area I'm having extreme difficulty is with the above. I'm very much a believer in what doesn't kill me makes me stronger and I truly believe with these hardships I would not be the person I am today and thus this journey. Wow. You know, this is such an important question and I didn't want to respond to it by email. <clears throat> because I want to respond fully. It is so hard to imagine that children who are so pure and they appear to look happy, how can they be attracting such heinous things as sexual abuse? And the person who has sent me this email wishes to remain anonymous and I respect their wishes but if I could have a dialogue with them I would ask them a couple of questions. The first question is with respect to the tragic death of her father. See if her father was sick for a while or if he was in an accident and suddenly he made his transition. I can see why that kind of a thing would put a child in a place of fear. Fear is the negative vibration. And a lot of children feel separation anxiety simply because they're going to daycare or school or because the parent is going to work. That separation anxiety is fear. And fear will bring negative manifestations unless that fear is dealt with so that it goes away. A lot of times fear does not get dealt with. So their separation anxiety is the first fear that a child experiences. Not all children experience separation anxiety. And I find that these days a lot of parents are so, um, so proactive in creating play groups and situations for children so that they can uh, release separation anxiety. Separation anxiety would never be created in the first place if the parent wasn't attached to the child all the time. Some parents carry the child around, take it everywhere they're going and feel responsible for entertaining the child and that is what creates separation anxiety. But in this situation, um, without knowing more, I can say that there are many sources of fear that can enter a child's life and create negative manifestations such as sexual abuse. Because if a child is on the vibration of fear, then the child will attract outcomes that magnify that fear. So the first fear is separation anxiety. Then the second fear is that children are taught not to trust. Don't trust strangers. Don't trust 
So that creates fear. Again, it's fear. And that fear will attract perpetrators who are also on the same vibration of fear. One who is a victim and one who is the perpetrator are both on the same vibration. The, the person who commits that outrage is hurting inside and the only release for their own internal issues is to take it out on someone. They know they are doing something that is hurting another person, but they do it anyway because they think that that's going to make them feel better. It's going to make them happy in some way, but it doesn't. It never makes anyone happy. Abuse never makes anyone happy. But they think it will, and that's why they commit such uh, uh, such acts. So, so then what happens, and in this specific case, if the transition of the father happened, then that puts the entire family in a place of fear. Now, this is a special circumstance, but in addition to separation anxiety, children are, a lot of children are subject to another type of fear. And that fear comes from feeding or reading or being hooked into or being empathic towards the fears of their parents. So a child who has a parent who is a warrior, whether mother or father does not matter, but a child who has a parent who is a warrior, chronic warrior, always worrying about things, that child adopts an attitude of fear. Mm-hmm. Yes. It really is as simple as that. The child doesn't understand why the parent is worrying, why the parent is afraid that things will go wrong. The child just feels fear. Fear that things, something's wrong, something's wrong. My parent is not happy. Something is wrong. And that puts them in a place of fear. So now the child attracts manifestations that reflect that fear. And you know, children, we think that they're helpless, but they are not. Because children are born with the ability to shift their vibration. Children are born with the ability to ch make a decision about feeling better. In the same family, when there is a shouting match between parents, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of someone that I know as I say this to you. Two little girls in the same family, parents are having a shouting match. One child goes and locks herself in the bathroom and cries. And the other child says, eh, you guys go sort it out while I go and play with my friend next door. Two children with the same attitude. One child took it on and went down the emotional scale to a place of fear. The other child didn't take it on and went out to have a good time. This is the difference. This simple difference is not a simple small difference. In vibrational terms, it makes a big, huge difference to what happens in the life of the child. And so this is the reason why children not only attract um, sexual abuse at a young tender age, but they also attract other things that happen. They get hurt, they fall, they get bullied at school, they, don't, they, get, they attract teachers who bully them by not making them feel worthy or making them feel stupid. All sorts of things happen to children who live in a vibration of fear. And a lot of parents worry and a lot of parents and a lot of children have separation anxiety from parents. And that is to the extent that the child gets caught up in all of that, then the child will get a, a sickness or the child will attract some kind of an event that will mirror the fact that the vibration inside the child is negative. A lot of times I see little children, two, three years old. And so this is what you should understand is that by the time a child is three years old, they already have adopted a way of looking at the world. 
And there are times when I see two and three year old children wearing glasses or being obese and, and I know, I know because those are physically manifested evidence of the fact that the child spends most of their time in a place of fear. And my heart reaches out to that child because all that child wants is for their, for their parent to stop worrying. All the child needs is to know that everything's going to be okay. And, and I feel like I want to grab those children and I want to hold them and I want to help them to understand that they don't have to have separation and anxiety and they don't have to absorb the worry and anxiety that their parents are feeling. You see, children feel very strongly. Whether they feel good or they feel bad, either way they feel very strongly. Children go right up the emotional scale and right down the emotional scale like that. And a very happy child can suddenly be a child throwing a tantrum lying on the floor. Children's emotions swing up and down really, really quickly. And they allow that swing to happen. And that not knowing what to do when they are down on the emotional scale, not knowing how to handle that emotion is a huge problem. And number three, so the number three cause that brings negative events into a child's um, life is that when a child goes down the emotional scale, people around them tell them that they are being inappropriate. You're not allowed to have a, a temper tantrum. You're not allowed to show your anger. And, and children who are not allowed to have an emotional release, they hold that negative emotion inside them. And a child who holds negative emotion inside them is a child who will attract negative consequences. Uh, it is always law of attraction is exact and things do not happen unless there is a vibrational match. A negative vibration cannot bring to you a positive result. And a positive result means that you are in a, ri in, in a high vibrational place. If you, in, if you manifest something negative, it means that you went down the emotional scale and that's where that manifestation happened. So this beautiful person who has requested to be anonymous, and I understand that. I understand that you still have a lot of healing to do with respect to the trauma that you experienced in your childhood. But law of attraction is exact and if you're going to use law of attraction effectively, you have to understand that nothing happened to you in your childhood that you did not create. But you didn't create out of awareness. You did not create deliberately. You created those things in your life because you didn't know any better. Nobody taught you and you didn't remember from when you were born. And it's okay because you can change all of that and you can get control over your life and you can let go that trauma. Don't let that trauma determine your future. Don't let what happened in the past be the thing that determines what will happen in your future because the future is totally and completely under your control. All right, I hope that this helps and I love that you ask the question because when you ask the question, you move forward. So I am proud of you. I love you so much. I know the trauma, I understand the trauma that you've been through and I have been through abuse as well. And I understand that trauma, but you gotta let it go if you're going to create a better life. And you, if you have children, you gotta let it go because your children will feed on your anxiety. Your children will feed on your fear. And we don't want that. So I'm gonna close the call just now. Love you lots. And I'm here to answer questions. Bring on those questions. Bye for now.